this is Andy's ball. It is her most favoriteest, everest, toyest. You shall seest what she doesest with her ball. Go play! This way, Andy! Hi, Autumn. That good snow? Andy thinks it's comfortable, huh? She a dork? So that is our doggies with her ball. Uh, she loves that ball. It's her most favorite disc toy. Um, she knocks herself in the head quite often with it, just running around out there. But she really loves her ball. Come on, Lynn, Lynn. So, today is a beautiful day. The snow is starting to melt a little bit because it's a little warm, but not completely warm. That's your ball. Yeah, look at that little nub nub wiggling. So yesterday was interesting. Last night, I should say. Um, we had an interesting visitor. And uh, it was one that I have not heard here in the six plus years that I've lived here. Um, but uh, we had an owl in the area yesterday and uh, so we heard it last night and we're pretty sure that uh, it's a great horned owl um, sounded really large um, but sounds can be deceiving but we noticed uh, we heard it last night so as I got ready to retire for the evening we made sure that all of our cats were in and I counted all of them <laughs> This time of year, um, we have seven cats. We have three indoors, and then we have four outdoors. And in the winter time, the outdoor cats come in um, off and on during the day, and then in the evening, just to warm up by the fire and get some cuddles and things like that. Um, and when there's predators out and about, we definitely make sure that they come in uh, so they're not uh, somebody's food. Um, but yeah, so last night when we heard the owl, uh, I made sure that all of our outdoor cats were in and accounted for. And it gave me time to reflect. Um, so anyways, a couple years ago, uh, we were raising ducks uh, with our chickens. We had some Pekin ducks. And uh, one of the days uh, when it was like this snowy, uh, my husband came out to do chores and uh, he noticed that uh, our one duck was missing. <laughs> we had put her in isolation because uh, uh, we had two 
ducks and two drakes and the one drake was overly uh, horny and he caused a lot of damage to um, Aflac um, because of his spurs so um, she had quite an injury <laughs> Autumn wants Andy's ball but uh, she had quite the injuries to her because of his spurs so we had separated Aflac from um, uh, Daphne and the two drakes so she could uh, heal. Well, my husband came out and noticed one day that uh, she was missing. And uh, Pekin ducks can't fly. Um, they're just too large and domesticated ducks really can't fly that much. Um, they can fly a little bit but not like wild ducks can. Um, so here's this huge, you know, basically a 15 pound flightless bird that's missing. Um, and so my husband started looking, he came and got me and let me know Aflac was missing. And so we're looking and looking and trying to figure this out because there was no signs of like a, a varmint getting in or anything like that. There was no blood trails really. And then my, my husband just happened to be walking the field um, behind us and uh, noticed that uh, something was a little off in the field. And so uh, he walked towards it. That's I'm sliding here. He walked towards it and uh, I'll show you the area here. Give me just a minute. Right there in that area, he noticed uh, Aflac was over there, um, and she was dead. And uh, so he's trying to figure out how she got from, uh, she was over there, right in that coop over there. It was a little bit smaller at the time. And how she got way out there. Um, there was... No signs of a varmint dragging her or anything. <clears throat> so, my husband uh, started tracking a little bit, seeing what was going on. Uh, because Aflac's body was uh, still intact, mostly. Um, so it wasn't like a coyote or something like that. Um, but her neck and some of uh, her body had been uh, basically they looked like it had been pecked at and uh, you know a bird of prey so we're thinking we're thinking we're thinking uh, you know eagle comes to mind because they're pretty big birds but the pen that she was at there's no way that an eagle could jump down and then take flight taking a 15 pound bird back out um, from you know just a straight flight up so we're thinking and thinking and thinking and uh, came to the conclusion that basically a great horned owl had come in and uh, taken Aflac out of there. Um, and we never really saw it around here. We've seen a couple great horned owls in other areas as we've driven, driven through the countryside here, but never really seen one in this exact area. But that's how we could figure out is uh, uh, because of the lack of, of tracks and uh, little loss of blood and the little damage done to uh, uh, Aflac's body that uh, an owl had carried her up and out. out. So uh, yet last night when I actually heard the owl out here, which like I said is the first time I've actually heard one in uh, the six years I've lived here, I definitely made sure that um, everybody was locked up and secure and uh, you know really didn't want our pets to be the owl's choice of meal last night. And it's just a lesson that you learn um, when you're raising animals, um, when you have a garden and things that uh, tend to bring in wildlife that's around you. As you learn things that you never thought possible, that you never really understood until you start living a more rural life and understanding how um, the environment interacts.
So that was that was definitely a hard lesson to learn, but um, life happens, you know. Uh, the wildlife around here have to eat too, and uh, if your pets or your livestock are not kept in a safe area, they become easy pickings for the, the wildlife around here. We do have coyotes. Um, a couple of years ago, um, we had uh, we learned a lesson about fencing. Um, we had where the coop was at the time, which is where our uh, it's our it's now our brooding coop. Let's see if I can get over there without falling on my face. Got a lot of new snow yesterday, so it's making it a little tricky. But I'll turn you guys around here. So give me a second. But right here, this is our original coop. My husband had revamped it last year, made it taller and stuff. Um, this is now our brooding coop or isolation coop if we have injured birds. Um, but this area here, this fence line, has always been where we've had uh, the beginning coop when we first uh, started the chicken journey about five years ago. So we had this here with the fence up. Um, I think it's about seven feet tall, the fence. And then we had an extension that went out uh, towards where the, the coop now is, our main coop. Um, that wasn't there before. But we had a run extension that went about, about that far, but the fence was only about four foot tall uh, for the extension. And then one night, we learned about proper fencing because some coyotes had come in, jumped the fence, the four foot fence, and got into the chicken coop and killed five of the eight chickens. The other three they couldn't reach because they got up high enough and, and back enough in the, the coop the way that was set up that the coyotes couldn't reach them. But, uh, but yeah, we lost five chickens that day. And uh, it was not a pretty sight. It was not. Uh, thankfully, my husband came out and he did the chores first. So he, went, he he saw what was left of the massacre. So he cleaned up the, the bodies and things so I didn't have to see it. And then we had to figure out what to do with the remaining three birds that were left. They were traumatized. I'm sure you would be too if you witnessed your... Uh, your friends getting ripped apart um, but uh, eventually we tried introducing them to a new flock that we had but that didn't go well so we ended up rehoming them with somebody else who just wanted a few uh, chickens for pets but it's another lesson that we we learned here um, and you know it's to make sure that your fencing is adequate to protect your animals from the wild animals because again the wild animals need to eat and if you're not doing your job protecting your animals they become food for the wild animals but anyways um, that's life out here in the country um, you deal with the different wildlife and you figure out how to deal with it as best as possible um, so yeah last night was the owls and then occasionally we'll hear the the coyotes, um, because they do live around here, they rotate uh, between the different parts of their territory. Just before I came out to shoot this video, I saw approximately a dozen deer running through the field, just uh, just across the way. So um, this is why I live out here. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, you take the good with the bad. You take the coyotes with the deer. You take the the hawks and the eagles and uh, owls and you know accept them for what they are um they're animals too and you can't fault them for trying to to eat and survive you know but um so again just counting our our cats and remembering our ducks and just having one of those days of of remembrance and uh also a day of just enjoying life like Andy is. I'll show you her again. She's just so hilarious to watch. She loves her ball. Yes, you do, don't you? Look at that num-num. You love your ball.
<laughs> and you love to run your mouth, we know. <laughs> For those guys who haven't watched uh, or aren't updated, Autumn here, the mouthy one, she's a Australian cattle dog. And then Andy, she's an Australian shepherd. They look very similar, but they're completely different breeds. Um, Autumn occasionally helps us herd our chickens, since she does not herd cattle here. But we have to watch her because, um, you know, her breed is meant to herd cattle, and so her bite is meant for biting cattle. And uh, so we have to be careful that uh, she doesn't try chomping on a chicken when she's trying to get them to move. She has killed one by accident, um, so we really have to be careful with her. But um, she does a good job, you know. You, you train her, and uh, you just pay attention to her, and she enjoys her job. And then Miss Andy, we just let her run and run and run to get her energy out because uh, she's, a, she's a herding dog, and we don't have sheep around here. But she's also kind of a ditz. <laughs> she's a missing a few crayons out of her box so to speak so she doesn't really know how to how to herd or anything trying to trying to show her what autumn does she's she completely just like yeah does not get it so we just let her run with her ball to get her energy out and just enjoy herself so that is our animal update <laughs> we sure have lots of those here uh, we love our animals. That's one of the reasons we moved out here. Um, you know, to have a garden, you know, and also to have have animals and uh, just have that companionship that animals bring. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing. So, I thank you so much for watching, everybody. And I hope that you just really enjoyed this video. You got a lot of fun watching uh, Andy play around a little bit and maybe gain some insight on how to better protect your animals if you live in rural areas like I do. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button uh, if you found this video useful. It helps other people be able to find this video as well. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That way you can stay in touch with our journey and all the ups and downs, the laughs and the tears that happen right here on my homestead. Until next time everybody, I hope that wherever you are, you're wonderfully blessed. Bye.